Good afternoon. Today we're going to see how to do a couple of doors. So we're going to have a door that go up, one go on the side, one that open a conventional door, and one that you need a key. So you can see this one doesn't work. So we're going to take the key on the table, and now the door open. So I'm going to show you how to do all those door and all those door close by themselves as well. So I'm just going to close this project and jump to another project. So in the new project here, as usual, I'm going to click on content. I'm just going to create a new folder that is going to be named my stuff. And I'm going to put all my things here. So here I'm just going to create a new folder that I'm going to call blueprints. And I'm going to go right in it. Here I'm going to create a blueprint class. I'm going to take actor. And I'm going to call that normal door underscore BP. I'm going to open that and this one will be a conventional door. So what we are going to do here, we are going to click here and we're going to add a static mesh and we're going to call that the pivot point. So pivot here, which is right there. And from the pivot point selected, we're going to add another static mesh and this time it's going to be door. And the door here, we're just going to select a cube. If you have your own door, you can go for it. It's going to be pretty much the same. But as I do not have a door here, I'm just showing how to do a normal door. There we go. So now I'm moving that door that's going to match the pivot point. So the pivot point is here, as you can see. So I'm moving the door to the edge here. So when it's going to rotate, it's going to rotate from this and not the door. So it's important that your door is under the pivot point, so it's attached. So if you move, uh, if you move the door, uh, the pivot point is going to move the door as well. If it's not attached, well, the door will move by itself, and it's not going to work. So from this here, uh, we're going to search for collision box, and I'm just going to resize the collision box. I'm just going to put the collision box under uh, the door itself. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to resize that. So I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Something like this. All right. A little bit too big, I guess. There we go. Around those lines. I'm going to compile and save that. So now we're going to go to the... Um, even graph so we don't need this so we can get rid of it so here we're just going to do the little logic that's going to open the door for us so we're going to click on the uh, collision box here we're going to right click and add event we're going to select begin overlap we're going to repeat and this time I'm going to take an overlap from the other actor we're going to search for a third person character or your character that you're using I'm going to repeat the same thing here for the end overlap. From the end overlap, I'm just going to drag and search for delay. And I'm going to put three seconds. And from the top one, we're going to search for timeline. And I'm just going to call that door. Actually, I'm just going to call that normal door like so and I'm gonna take the delay here and plug it to reverse we're gonna go to the timeline so double click on it we're gonna add a track and I'm just gonna oh, let's say open for a track you can put the name you want it's uh, it's not a big deal so here we're gonna add a key by right clicking on the graph here I'm going to make sure that the key is 0 and the value is 0. I'm going to add another key. And this time, we're going to put 2 seconds. And we're going to change the value for 90 degrees. So, 90. so I'm just going to click here so we can see that on the one graph. And I'm going to change the length here for 2. Like so, I'm going to compile and save going to go back to the event graph. In the event graph, we're going to drag from update and we're going to search for set relative 
rotation so relative rotation and we're going to make sure that we select the one with the pivot point i'm going to move that here and on the new rotation here just right click on it and split the structure because we just want to use the z value we don't want to use anything else so we're going to drag from open here to the z value so if we compile and save now it should work so basically what it's doing is that when your character step in the box so the collision box it's going to play this which will action this so the door will open and when you go out of the collision box it's going to wait three seconds and it's going to play the same thing reverse so the door will close so we go back to the third person character and try this door we're going to put the door in play here move the door a little bit up and do play so the door as you can see open and if i go out of the collision box it's gonna shut down by itself so now you have a normal door right here now we're gonna see how to do a sliding door well the, the process is a little bit the same as we just did so we're gonna create uh, a new blueprint i'm gonna select actor slide door underscore bp and i'm going to open that so here we're going to have a static mesh and i'm going to call that door and once again here on the side i'm going to search for the cube i'm going to take the cube and i'm going to size that like a door once again something like this i'm going to move that up a little bit there we go and we're just going to add a collision box so collision box and we're going to make sure it's a little bit bigger so we can click here and scale it this it's good i'm just going to make that a little bit bigger for the side here there we go should be good i'm gonna compile and save that i'm gonna go to the event graph here in the event graph we don't need that so we're gonna remove it and same as earlier we're gonna click on the box collision here we're gonna add begin overlap i'm gonna click again and end overlap we're gonna cast to our third person character i'm gonna repeat the same process here and from this one here we're going to search for the delay and we're going to add three seconds and here we're going to drag from the top one search for timeline i'm going to add the timeline this one is the sliding door so i'm going to call that door slide whatever the name you want i'm going to plug the delay here in reverse i'm going to open that i'm going to add the track I'm going to make sure that I'm just going to call that open. I'm going to change the land here for two. Right click on the graph to have a key. Will be same as previously, so zero, zero. And we're going to click on the graph once again. And we're going to add a second key. So this time, this key will be only two and one. I'm going to click here so we can see it on one graph i'm going to compile and save that i'm going to go back to our event graph and we're just going to drag from the update here and we're going to search for set relative location and we're going to select the one with the door here same as previously we're just going to right click and split the structure so we can have access to each of the values and from the y value i'm going to search for lerp just going to move that out of the way a little bit in b i'm going to put 200 and i'm going to drag open to the alpha so basically it's going to move the door to 200 unit so lerp is 0 to b 
in comparison to what we put here in the timeline. So if you put your cursor on it, you can, it's pretty much what just I, I just said. So now it should work. So we do compile and save. I'm gonna go back to our map. I'm gonna take the door, which is massive. And we're gonna see if it's worked. So we're gonna go play. So the door should slide on the side. There you go. As you can see, it's moved to the side. But the problem is you can see it's just went in the ground. So how to fix that? Well, here, we're just gonna reset that. There you go. So let it reset here. I'm gonna compile and save, go back to the blueprint here. We're gonna refresh the blueprint by put it again. We're gonna adjust like this. So now we're gonna do the play. So now the door will move to the side by itself. Here we go, like this, right? So if you change the um, the number here on the lerp, the door will go further down. So I'll put 500 unit just to show you. I'm gonna do play. And now the door should go pretty far. There you go. You see, go a little bit further and go faster because it has to play the animation in two seconds. So now we're just gonna create the door that go up. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take um, the sliding door and we're just gonna duplicate it. So duplicate the door. I'm gonna call that door up underscore BP. I'm gonna open that. So here it's pretty much the same logic. However, I'm just gonna get back to 200 here. So instead of having um, connected to the Y here, if you all out on your keyboard and click, it's gonna disconnect it. I'm gonna put the return value to the Z value here. I'm gonna compile and save. So <laughs> if you go back in it, well, I'm gonna put the door in play first. I'm gonna put the door right here. I'm gonna put the door a little bit up. There we go, let's play. So now the door will go up instead of going down. I mean, instead of going on the side like this one, right? So now we're gonna see how to do the, uh, the door with a key. So now we're just gonna create a new door. Actually, we can just duplicate the door. So I'm gonna just take the, uh, the normal door here and I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna call that door key bp i'm gonna open that so here i'm just gonna close the other doors that we used earlier we're gonna go to our third person character first so third person character blueprint i'm gonna open that here we just have to create a variable so we're gonna create a variable and i'm gonna call that key card i'm gonna leave it as is compile and save we don't have to do anything here uh, anything else here in the character so we're gonna go back to the door which is the one with a key and we're just gonna add a little more here so go hold B on your keyboard to do a branch just plug everything back in from the third person character here we're gonna drag and search for key and we're gonna get the key so the value, the variable that we just created in the third person character, I'm going to connect that to the condition of the branch here. So basically what it's doing for us is when we're going to step in the collision box with a third person character, it's going to make sure that we have the key. If we do have the key, it's going to follow up with this, which is going to open the door. If we do not have the key, well, it's not going to work it's not going to open the door for us. So we're going to compile and save. So now we just have to create the key. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to go to the content browser here, go back to my stuff, and I'm going to do a new blueprint, an actor, and I'm going to call this one key card underscore BP. I'm going to open that. And here I'm going to have a cube, I mean a static mesh, I'm going to call that key and I'm going to select a cube for the key. Well, not this cube. 
and take this cube here and I'm just gonna resize that because it's huge there we go like this we're gonna add a collision box to this cube so I'm gonna click add here I'm gonna search for collision box and I'm gonna resize the collision box so it's bigger so we can walk over it like this sounds good I'm gonna compile and say we're gonna go to the event graph we're gonna get rid of that from the collision box here we're gonna add a new event and we're gonna take the one big and overlap from the other actor we're gonna cast our third person character and we're gonna drag from the blue pin here and we're gonna search for the key which is the value we created earlier but not get key we're gonna get set so we're gonna select set I'm gonna plug that in I'm gonna check that box and as soon as we walk on that we don't want the key to remain in place so we're gonna destroy the actor so which is destroying the key so compile and save so basically when we walk on it it's gonna verify that we have the key if we do it's gonna open the door and here if we walk on the key well it's gonna active is gonna check that to be true which is gonna make this one true so the condition will be here on true so we can go and the door will open so if I go there and put the key card in play it's massive but you get the point I'm gonna put the door here there we go so now I'm gonna do play so as you can see here the door does not open but if I go here take the key now the door open for us so that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys so we were able to see a door that slide we get a door that go up we get a normal door so a conventional door all those doors close by themselves and one that you need a key to open so that's all the doors that I wanted to show you guys so I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.